is there any credible evidence of Iran interfering in, in Iraqi affairs, are, giving uh, such arms to Shia militias? Are in fact, do we know whether U.S. troops are being killed uh, indirectly by Iranian participation? To answer the last part of your question first, there has been no evidence presented that the weapons, particularly these roadside bombs that have killed so many American soldiers, are coming from Iran. There have been allegations after allegations, but even someone uh, <clears throat> who is very critical of Iran and who is a, a strong, was always a strong supporter of the, uh, of the war in Iraq, Patrick Clawson, from a, a, a very, um, well, a, a fairly right-wing analyst here in Washington, recently said in the last day or two, that he believes that the U.S. needs to come up with more evidence to bolster its claim that Iran is responsible because he's aware that all over Iraq, left over from the 1990-91 war, there were these kinds of uh, penetrator weapons that have been used in the roadside bombs that have killed Americans. So he's not even convinced, and he's somebody who looks for ways to be convinced that Iran is responsible. So if you're not convincing Patrick Clawson, it seems to me that there's a real problem of lack of evidence. The uh, positioning that uh, Hillary Clinton's taking, in terms of what her, the strategic objectives of America are in, the, in Iran and Iraq, um, are there, is there a significant difference between how she imagines those strategic objectives from the Republicans? And I'm talking specifically sort of the outgrowth of what this uh, Senate resolution was on Iran. I think that there is a widespread unified position uh, held by Democrats and Republicans, realists and neocons across the elite political spectrum in this country that sees U.S. national interests or defines U.S. national interests in the Middle East in the context of control of resources, most notably oil, control of a strategic region, uh, militarily, and the expansion of U.S. military power through bases, as well as strengthening the alliance with Israel. Israel, power, and oil have always been the triad of U.S. policy in, in the Middle East as a whole. That hasn't changed, and I think it's held by both Democrats and Republicans. And there seems to be a division, uh, for example, between Biden and Clinton on whether to accept Iran as a regional power. Biden seems to be saying they are a regional power, deal with them, negotiate with them, have a regional peace conference about Iraq. Biden and, who, and the sort of opinion he represents seem to be saying it's a fact, deal with it. The other side, which seems to include uh, Mrs. Clinton, seems to be we won't accept Iran as a regional power and sooner or later we're going to do something about it. I think that that's right. I think that Hillary Clinton has staked out an incredibly militaristic uh, posture. She's made clear that she sees no challenge that should not be answered with military force, uh, and she's prepared to use that force. Whether she thinks it's because being the first serious woman candidate for president, she has to appear more militaristic than the men, uh, I don't know. Whether this is just her own view is certainly as likely as anything else. Uh, but she has proved herself to be by far the most militaristic of all the Democratic candidates. Uh, and I think that the, um, the recognition that Iran is a regional power uh, is, I mean, one can say it's a no-brainer, but that doesn't get you very far. It's certainly been true for generations that the only two countries in the entire Middle East that have the indigenous capacity to become regional powers, meaning regional challengers to U.S. power, are Iran, and before the U.S. invasion and before the sanctions and before the last U.S. war, Iraq. They both have water, they both have money from oil, or did, and they both have large size population and large size territory. Those are the three requirements to become regional powers. Those are the only two countries in the region that have them. Now there's only one, because Iraq is occupied and is no longer an indigenous regional anything. Uh, it's an occupied uh, territory. So Iran remains the only indigenous Middle Eastern regional power. And clearly Hillary Clinton is not prepared to accept that. How far uh, Joseph Biden would go to accept it, I'm not sure either.